Welcome to Nostalgic Medicine, a look back at the history of medicine and healthcare. Today's topic is on the history of diabetes. Diabetes affects about 1 in 10 people worldwide and is one of the leading causes of death globally. Mortality numbers are likely to continue increasing as high calorie foods are readily available and modern technology allows us to live relatively sedentary lives. The mechanism of how diabetes forms is quite complex, but you could think of it as being mainly driven by two substances in particular, insulin and glucose. Insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas and it acts on many areas of the body, but its most important effect is to reduce the glucose levels in the blood. But for reasons such as genetics, inflammation or obesity, diabetes occurs either when the pancreas loses the ability to produce insulin or if the body becomes unable to respond to the hormone. A raised glucose level can cause acute symptoms like excessive urination which can eventually kill a person or more longer term complications like blindness, paralysis or kidney failure. Like many of the illnesses I speak about in this channel, diabetes has affected humans ever since the dawn of civilization and has been written about throughout history, with the combined knowledge of the disease being built on over the generations. The earliest written reference to diabetes is from the Ebers Papyrus, which briefly mentioned the condition that causes a person to lose weight, become very thirsty and pee a lot. But the ancient group of people who knew the most about diabetes were the Indians during the 5th century BC, mainly led by doctors such as Shushrata and Sharaka. Shushrata was able to diagnose the condition by observing that ants were attracted to the sweetness of a patient's urine. Indian medical texts were also able to differentiate between diabetes that forms in young children with no known cause, and diabetes that forms in older people that consumed an excessive amount of things like cereals, rice and sweets. So the Asia Indians knew things about diabetes that would have actually become mainstream in Western science until the 19th century. The word diabetes actually comes from the ancient Greek word for siphon, due to the large amount of urine that the patients produced. The word mellitus meaning honey was added in the 18th century to distinguish it from the unrelated illness diabetes insipidus, which also causes excessive urine. Despite the knowledge that doctors from these ancient civilizations had about diabetes, they didn't actually know what caused it, and there wasn't much that they could really do to treat the condition. The ancient Greeks initially incorrectly thought that diabetes was caused due to kidney issues, as they saw that the kidney was responsible for filtering urine based on animal dissections performed by physicians like Galen. And in terms of treatments for diabetes, there's been hundreds of various herbs and food mixtures that have been suggested by past physicians. These include elderberry or milk by the Egyptians, and things like opium and bloodletting in Europe. But after looking through many different ancient treatments, I was actually able to find one used in the medieval Islamic world that might have been effective. The famous Persian doctor Avicenna wrote about diabetes in his influential medical encyclopedia. He knew about several long-term complications of the disease like nerve damage and erectile dysfunction, and his recommended treatment for diabetes was seeds from a plant called fenugreek. The effects of the fenugreek seed have actually been recently tested and has been demonstrated in several scientific studies to cause a significant reduction in blood glucose levels, so the plant was probably quite helpful to people with diabetes in the 11th century. The treatment for diabetes would evolve around the late 19th century to pure starvation diets, where patients were fed with as little calories as possible to drive extreme weight loss and to prevent sugar from appearing in the urine. 
the treatment was actually discovered unintentionally by a French pharmacist when he noticed that people who had diabetes before a siege of Paris in 1870 no longer had glucose in the urine after the siege was lifted as the city had severely depleted food supplies during the siege. So severe dietary restriction became the prescribed treatment for diabetes for the next 50 years and it seemed to improve the life expectancy for overweight type 2 diabetics by a few years but unfortunately made things worse for the skinny type 1 diabetics. The breakthrough in type 1 diabetes therapy came with the gradual understanding of the actual physiology of how diabetes occurs. It began in 1889 after two German doctors removed the pancreas of a dog and then observed that it develops the symptoms of diabetes not long after. So by doing this, they proved that the pancreas was producing something that was key to controlling blood sugar. The substance was later called insulin and it was named after the small islands of cells located in the pancreas that was found to be responsible for secreting this substance. But insulin was only a hypothetical substance in 1921 and at this time, it was known that the majority of cells in the pancreas produced digestive enzymes which can break down insulin, so it was unclear how anyone would be able to isolate it from the pancreas. But a young Canadian doctor called Frederick Banton devised a clever experiment that would isolate insulin from a dog so that he can give it to a diabetic patient. Banton decided to cut a dog's pancreatic duct which would cause the pancreatic cells that produce the digestive enzymes to shrink, leaving behind the insulin producing islets of Langerhans. He could then remove it from the dog, inject it into a person, and then hope for a reduction in blood sugar. After months of experiments using this technique with his assistant Charles Best, they found that the pancreatic extract was able to reduce the blood sugar of a dog by 40%, which meant that for the first time ever, insulin was successfully isolated. The insulin production method devised by Banton and Betts was refined and optimised later with the help of their supervisor John McLeod and a biochemist called James Cullip. And when the refined insulin extract was tested on diabetic children in the hospital in 1922, it was practically a miracle cure as the children recovered within minutes. The four of them had a well-documented history of fights and disputes about who should gain the most credit for the discovery of insulin, which is way too complicated to get into in this video, but they ultimately shared the Nobel Prize in 1923, and as a last goodwill to science, they decided not to patent the rights to insulin so that it could be made widely available to the general public at a low price, which unfortunately isn't really the case for insulin anymore. Insulin was a magic bullet for type 1 diabetes and drugs to treat type 2 diabetes would come 30 years later. They were actually discovered when clinical trials to test a group of antibiotics called sulfonamides were found to cause patients to faint. The fainting was due to hypoglycemia, so diabetes researchers used these results to create a new group of compounds that was effective for type 2 diabetes. More advancements in the treatment of diabetes have come ever since then. We've discovered several more classes of drugs to optimise diabetes care as much as possible. Diabetes management has also become user friendly, as patients can now monitor their sugar levels and give themselves insulin in the comfort of their homes. The research in diabetes mellitus has also made us realise that it's a much more complex disease than we could have ever imagined as we discovered that there's actually up to 10 different types of diabetes. But there's still no absolute cure for diabetes and despite the current treatments we have, sufferers of both types 1 and 2 lose well over a decade in life expectancy 
so there's still more work to be done with diabetes research. Current techniques in development to cure the disease include gene therapy or stem cell transplants. But cases of diabetes are continuing to increase worldwide and it could be strongly linked with certain environmental factors. So it seems like the best way to fight the disease is by a combined effort to improve the nutrition and physical fitness of the general population. So by eating healthy and keeping active, it seems like in the case of diabetes, prevention is better than cure.